Hello, you guys. Kristen here. Happy Thursday. We are here. Let me make sure I'm live. Is it working? Facebook Live. Oh my God. Super slow sometimes. Make sure it's on. We're ready to rock and roll. Okay, we're good to go. Hi. Happy Thursday, you guys. I am super excited for a couple of reasons. One, we're about to discuss my favorite topic of all time, which is dessert. Okay, I asked you guys yesterday in the group, comment here in the, the group if you are here live with me. I want to see who's with me today. So super excited to talk about dessert, my favorite topic ever. But number two, I want to give a major shout out to Jen Pity. It's her birthday, my dessert queen. Happy birthday, Jen. Um, I posted yesterday her cheesecake bite recipe, which is impeccable. I'm super excited. She is actually having a few different desserts during our healthy and happy hol or holiday challenge coming up next week. And I'm super excited to share that with you guys the, the, who's joining the challenge. Hey, Monique, you love desserts too, girl, just like me. You guys, when we have food freedom, we are able to enjoy desserts and lose weight and maintain our health. Bottom line, okay, or maintain our weight, whatever your goals are. I'm a firm believer that dessert is like the best time of the day, okay? It is the best food group, I always say. My family knows me very well, knows that I always look forward to dessert, right? When I go to a wedding, I'm super excited for wedding cake and all the desserts. Um, even Thanksgiving, you guys, I was born on Thanksgiving. I'm always excited for the birthday cake on Thanksgiving, even more than all the other foods, right? So actually last year, my sister, she's also here in the group, she made me this vegan um, birthday cake with a cookie dough filling, oh my God. Like I still dream about this cake. So I love dessert. And so anyone that works with me knows that dessert is a part of our nutrition because I also believe in we eat to live, but we also live to eat. There has to be a balance. That's what food freedom is all about. So I wanna to talk today about dessert. I get so many questions. You know, a lot of people say like, am I allowed to eat dessert or should I eat dessert or how often can I have dessert? What is dessert? What's considered a treat? So I kind of want to talk a little bit about that today, guys, to give you some clarity. And those of you who are new to my trainings, the good, the bad, and the truth, the point of these trainings is to give you guys all of the information and then you make the decision of what works best for you based on your preferences and your goals and where you want to see yourself in the future, right? And what's like realistic for you, most importantly, what you can sustain and what is stress-free for you. So let's jump right into this topic, the good, the bad, and the truth about my favorite food group of all time, dessert, okay? So the good thing about eating dessert, obviously this goes without saying, is that it is delicious, obviously, right? Okay, so a lot of you guys said you like donuts, you like cookies, you like ice cream, you like pies. Um, I know my girl Brenda loves her donuts and cinnamon rolls, right? Um, Regine, I love how you wrote dark chocolate and um, the brie, the triple cream brie, right? So it doesn't have to be sweet. Desserts can be savory as well. Um, you know, so it's always delicious. So we always associate dessert with something we really enjoy, no matter what it is, even if it's a good cappuccino. Sometimes like that'll be my dessert. I love coffee, so a really good cappuccino um, or a good glass of Cabernet. I love red wine as well and tequila. I love it all. I love everything, champagne too. Um, it's celebratory, speaking of champagne. Um, so dessert is a way to celebrate. You know, we have a birthday or a wedding or a baby shower, um, you know, or if it's like um, an anniversary, maybe you have a little bit of your old wedding cake. Um, you know, whatever it is, dessert is meant to be celebrated. Okay, so just like I said before, we, we eat to live, right? But we also live to eat. And food is part of culture and celebrating. So that's the good part about dessert. It brings people together, it makes people happy, and it's just nice. We, we, life is too short not to enjoy dessert, in my opinion, okay? Um, and also, dessert is a great way to get creative, okay? Those of you who love to bake, right? And it's a skill. I mean, if you watch these shows like Cake Boss, um, all these shows on TV, um, like baking shows, even kids doing like amazing um, cookies and desserts. Um, and there's some really awesome bakeries here where I live in Florida and like their cakes are masterpieces. Like I can't even believe how they make these things. They're works of art. So culinary art is a thing. Jen, oh my gosh, the desserts you make are like beautiful. Like that you are an artist. Bakers are artists, in my opinion, so it's a great way to get creative. And then lastly, like I said before, desserts, they're customized. They can really be anything. So sometimes people say, like, I don't like sweets. You know, dessert for me can be, like, a glass of wine, or it can be cheese. Um, it could be um, really anything, good coffee, right? So dessert can be multiple things, right? If you ask my husband, you know, nachos are dessert for him, right? <laughs> so it really depends on the 
Thursday. So that's all the good things, obviously, about dessert. Okay, oh, and I guess one other thing I should say is that the good thing about dessert is yes, you can eat dessert and lose weight, okay? You can have dessert and still be healthy. That is a big thing I should add on here. Eh, I'll add it later, whatever. Okay, so that's another good part about dessert. Good news for you guys. The quote unquote bad about desserts, all right? Number one, I think all of you guys probably know this. Typically, desserts aren't healthy, right? So Brenda, for example, I know you love cinnamon rolls. You know, eating a cinnamon roll at Cinnabon, for example, is not the healthiest treat, right? Um, or I go to haagen and get ice cream, for example. Um, or actually, I'm going to use my, my alma mater, Penn State, the Penn State Creamery. Amazing ice cream. Oh, my God. Um, but it has a super high fat content compared to other ice creams, hence why it's so delicious. Super high in sugar, right? So definitely not a healthy option. So most desserts are unhealthy. Most desserts are inflammatory. Okay, they have inflammatory ingredients like sugar, dairy, um, they have wheat, they have all kinds of flours and them, refined flours and sugars. So they're definitely not going to be a healthy option for us. Or inflammatory oils, you know, depending on where they're baked too. So typically they're not healthy. If I say typically because of course there are healthier alternatives, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. Oh, that actually should be over here. Um, there are a lot of healthy alternatives these, these days to desserts, okay? Like cookies and cakes and pies and brownies and puddings and ice creams. Um, there, guys, we are so lucky that there are always products coming on the market of healthier alternatives. So let me add that over here. Healthy alternatives. You probably see lots of like, you know, keto or paleo, um, you know, friendly desserts. Um, are they always weight loss friendly? That's a whole other story. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But are they going to be healthier than, you know, eating Entenmann's? Probably, right? Um, okay, the bad about desserts, even if they are the healthier alternatives, okay, they're always going to be calorically dense, right? And, and the problem is calories, there's a great book, Good Calorie, Bad Calorie, right? And not all calories are created equal. So I'm all about eating foods that are nutritious, calories that serve a purpose most of the time, right? I mean, calories in Tiramisu, they're not really purposeful, but they're delicious. And once in a while, that's totally fine. But um, a lot of times when we have dessert too much, we are consuming calories that are not really doing a service. So this is where, you know, eat to live comes into play. You know, most calories we consume should have a purpose, right? They have nutrients in them, for example. So a lot of the desserts that we are consuming, you know, don't have that many nutrients. Now, arguably, almond flour, coconut flour, cosmo flour, um, all those like paleo approved flours, for example, tiger nut flour is a great one too. Um, they do have a little bit of fiber in them, like coconut especially, and, um, oh God, tiger nut, right? And tiger nut's a great flour, guys. It is nut free. There's no nuts, even though it's a tiger nut. It's dairy free, grain free, soy free, um, super great for anyone with allergens. And, you know, there is fiber, there's a little bit of protein in some of these flours, but other than that, there's really no nutrients and they're very calorically dense. So even though they're healthy, doesn't mean that if we're on the weight loss journey, that we want to be eating them all the time, right? Um, and that's one of the, the, the quote unquote bad about having desserts is they're not really serving a purpose other than just to make us happy and smile um, because we like how they taste, okay? Um, portion control. So a lot of people feel like they struggle with their portions when it comes to eating desserts. So cookies, for example. My husband's the kind of guy, and I'm sure a lot of you guys, comment below if you agree with me on this one, he can't have just one cookie. You know, if I bake cookies, it's like he's gonna have none or like five, right? Comment below, that's me, hashtag that's me. If you have a hard time controlling dessert, whether it's cookies, whether it's um, candy, whether it's ice cream, you can't just have one serving of ice cream, it's the whole pint, all this all or nothing mentality. Comment hashtag all or nothing if you feel like you have that mindset when it comes to dessert, because I I understand you. I used to be that person, okay? Um, but for me, it was like, yeah, cookies for sure. I would just, um, to my, well, I should say my defense, but I would just get like the massive cookies. Like if, at Penn State, we had these like huge um, cookies that they would sell at the local grocery store and I would go like every day to get a cookie or like I would go get um, a cookie pie. I loved cookie cake. Um, I would get one of those a week and I had like frosting on it and everything. Oh my gosh, like I think back now, like I, I was a sugar addict. I've talked about this before in the group. Um, major addiction to sugar and I could not control my portions. Monique, all or nothing, I hear you. So I want you guys to understand that it is possible 
to break the all or nothing mindset when it comes to dessert, right? It is possible to control your portions, okay? But a lot of that work, it's not the food, it's not the food's fault, right? A lot of people have this assumption that food controls us, all right? Well, cookies are addicting. It's like, mm, yes and no. Is sugar addictive? Yes. But if we also have certain beliefs about these foods or we're dealing with other things in our life that we're looking for comfort in cookies, that's where we have to focus. So that's kind of where I want to get into emotional eating here. Okay, oftentimes when we find ourselves eating dessert a lot, you know, like every day we're having treats, like we're eating cookies every day, um, you know, there's usually something else going on, right? I know last week, for example, was the election and a lot of my clients that I've spoken to, um, a lot of them are working with me because of emotional eating. And, you know, they were talking about how like there's a lot of stress last week and frustration and fear and doubt and all of these emotions that trigger our desire for comfort food. We crave sugar, we crave carbs, we crave comfort, right? And so oftentimes desserts affiliated with that. So I don't want to necessarily say that's bad, that's kind of harsh because guys, emotional eating is my wheelhouse, my specialty and everybody, Every person that's watching this video right now, everyone I know, myself included, we all emotionally eat from time to time, okay? But in order for us to be successful in the weight loss journey and for us to be healthy in the long run, we have to be able to control it most of the time. Because if we don't, that is when food will control us. And the goal is for us to be in control. Because how we do one thing is how we do everything. If we can control food, we can control so many other things in our life. Comment here in the chat if you feel like you lack control of your life. Hashtag that's me. I lack control in my life. Because oftentimes if that's how we feel, food is no different. Food, our relationship with, our relationship with food is a direct correlation of our relationship with ourself. They mirror each other. Okay, I want that to be very clear. That is super important to understand with emotional eating. So if we, if we struggle with control of food, we probably struggle with control in other parts of our life. So that's where we have to focus on getting control there. That's why I say to be successful in a weight loss journey, it's a mindset thing. We have to work on the mindset. It's 80% mindset, 20% food and fitness, right? Those of you who work with me, you know I talk about this a lot. Like, so that's one of the quote unquote bad, you know, like I know me, for example, Wednesdays, I crave chocolate. I wear pink, no, I'm kidding but I love Mean Girls. I wear pink and I, I crave chocolate every Wednesday at 3.30. And it's usually because I'm stressed. I'm like, oh my God, I'm halfway through the week, halfway through the day, and I haven't gotten X, Y, and Z done. And I feel stressed about it. And so I go for my chocolate. So I used to have like chocolate like on my desk and I don't do that anymore. I have to like go downstairs because my home office is upstairs. I have to go downstairs and physically get it. And if I have to do that, I'm probably not gonna eat it. Let's be serious. But anyway, um, that's one of the quote unquote bad with emotional eating. So if you notice yourself always craving dessert, but usually it's during stressful times of your life or if you're bored um, or if you're lonely, all these emotions, um, that's really the root problem we have to focus on. It's not the food, it's, it's here. Um, craving versus a need, okay? I, I need cookie dough. You guys, <laughs> hashtag that's me if you said that. I need chocolate. I need, right? It, actually, comment in the chat here with what you need. Tell me what it is you say you need. I need wine. I need coffee. Well, sometimes we do, right? Because we're tired. But um, I need ice cream. Whatever. Tell me if you've said that at least once this week. Okay. Right. Now, there. And a lot of times we uh, we misunderstand the two words, right? So a craving is not the same thing as a need. All right. Oftentimes these cravings come from other things in our life, right? We have stress we're dealing with. Fear, you got in a fight with somebody, right? And that is what leads to the craving. Or you're watching TV, you're watching Netflix, right? And you know, it's nine o'clock at night and you're craving carbs because you're tired or because you're used to eating and watching TV. It's just a thing, right? I mean, oftentimes that's just a habit. Cravings are usually habits, number one, or their emotions, number two. A need is like a physical need. Like I need water. I need food, right? I need nourishment. That is a need. Ooh, Monique, Sour Patch Kids. You need Sour Patch Kids? <laughs> That's funny. Um, now, no one needs Sour Patch Kids, right? That is an example of like a craving. Like what, what emotion are we trying to fill? What void are we feeling that we need to fill, 
That's the bigger question there. We'll talk about that later. Um, but that's what we have to think about, guys. Craving versus a need. Now, I want you guys to understand something, too. Now I'm getting a little bit off topic with dessert, but um, when we're have, we have, I don't want you to think that you can't ever give into a craving, okay? You crave Sour Patch Kids, Monique, like have a Sour Patch Kid once in a while. But if this is like an everyday occurrence, then we got to figure out what the bigger issue is there, right? Okay, because for health, you, I, guys, I always say this, health first, weight loss second, both with strategy. Is eating Sour Patch Kids every day healthy? Probably not. Right? Your dentist is going to be like, uh-uh, no way, um, right? So we have to think about that too. All right, off of the bat, you guys know I love dessert. I don't want to harp on this too much. Okay, let's go over here. Truth, right? And Monique and Jen, you guys know, you guys have worked with me. You know that I'm really big on this, okay? If you, anyone here that's watching this training, if any of you are following a plan or like a meal plan or a diet or whatever, where you're not allowed to have dessert or you're not allowed to have, you know, your favorite dessert once in a while, get off of that plan. Unless like you're allergic to something or you have like doctor strict orders, like you cannot eat this food or else you will have an allergic reaction or whatever. Um, if you're really on a really, really strict diet, that's probably not sustainable for you, right? Actually it isn't. And I would highly recommend adjusting your plan here, okay? Because again, we live to eat and we eat to live. It has to be a balance. And if you're in this group, it's because you enjoy food. We love to eat, right? And so we enjoy food, but we also enjoy other things in life that make us happy. We don't depend on food, right? But every diet should allow dessert, and if it doesn't, get off of it in my personal opinion, because then you're not gonna be happy long-term. You might be happy for four weeks and you lose weight really quickly, but then what? What happens after that, all right? Um, healthy alternatives, I said this before, healthy alternatives does not always equal weight loss, okay? So oftentimes, guys, those like paleo cookies, those, um, you know, almond flour brownies, like whatever, sometimes they have more calories in them than like a regular brownie from Entenmann's, like seriously. Um, even with like chips, for example, like Siete chips, I love them, right? They're grain-free tortilla chips. They have almost more, the same, if not more calories than Tocitos, right? Are they healthier? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean they're calorie-free, right? Same thing with like, you know, dairy-free yogurts, dairy-free ice creams. Sometimes they have more calories than the regular ice cream or the regular yogurts. Um, or the regular pies, like this is a low sugar pie, but it might be really high in fat. It really depends on, on how you're trying to eat, or your goals, okay, um, and your needs, your nutritional needs. So healthy alternatives don't always equal weight loss. So we always have to enjoy dessert judiciously, is what I say, okay, um, and, and be mindful of our portions with desserts, obviously. And this is the last and final thing I'm going to leave you with, guys, today. Control is everything. You guys probably know I'm preaching to the choir here. I mean, I, for one, struggled for most of my life with control over dessert, okay? I would see, my mom would keep the Pillsbury icing on like the way top cabinet in our kitchen because I couldn't reach it, right? Um, I would always go and sneak and eat dessert out of the container. And now I can barely touch icing because my taste buds have just changed and how I've changed my nutrition. Um, but I used to love icing, like Dunkaroos, I would get the pack of Dunkaroos, not even eat the cookie, just eat the icing. I was ridiculous. Cookie dough, I wasn't allowed to have as a kid. And then so I, when I got in college, I went to cookie dough heaven all the time. Um, and then even post-college, I did the same thing. So I had no control, right? And so once you gain control of dessert, we have control in so many other aspects of our life, okay? Um, so enjoy your desserts. So you can have your cake and eat it too. That's my final words for you guys. You can have your cake and eat it too. And especially if you learn how to control your desserts. And if you're struggling to control your intake of dessert, or you don't know how to have dessert, you don't know like how often or what kind of dessert, what serves your goals, what, um, if you have any allergy, like what kind of desserts can you have? How can you feel not guilty? Because comment below here if you feel guilt whenever you have dessert. That's a major emotion I hear a lot is guilt, right? And we feel like we're never gonna get to our goal if we have dessert, right? And I wanna tell you guys that that's not true. A lot of women that I work with, men and women I should say, Jen is a great example of her birthday, they can eat dessert and lose weight and maintain their weight loss. Okay, Abby, you guys have seen Abby, she's a great example of that. Um, a lot of people you see in the group will prove that, okay? 
So anyway, if you are struggling with getting control of deserves and not having the guilt, right? And most importantly, like you just want to wrap your head around the idea that you can have dessert and lose weight, right? And you're like, Kristen, how the hell do I do that? Like, teach me how to have food freedom, okay? Hashtag teach me if you want to learn how to have food freedom and eat dessert because you can have your cake and eat it too. And I can show you how. All you have to do is book a free call with me, createmyweight.com forward slash apply. And you and I will just talk about like, okay, like, well, what are you trying to achieve? What are your struggles? And how can I help you? You know, and why is it that you feel guilty about dessert? And, and what kind of desserts have you tried? Or what have you tried in the past that has or has not worked for you? And what will finally work for you? Okay, because like I said, if you do this right, you can have dessert and chat and look how and feel how you want. It's totally doable. Okay. Createmyweight.com forward slash apply. Book a free call with me to see if I can help you. And if you're looking for more recipe ideas for healthy desserts and the not so healthy desserts, you want to enjoy both. I'm all about enjoying both. I like my healthy treats and my not so healthy treats. I do it all. Okay. Um, so if you want more recipes, you want to, you know, enjoy these foods, we have this challenge coming up next week. You see me posting in the group. Um, it starts on Sunday the 15th. It goes until the end of November. And Jen here in the group is going to be sharing some of her recipes. Pip is a plant-based chef. She'll also be sharing some plant-based desserts and some entrees and sides and soups and um, side dishes, like I said. So um, I've got you covered, guys. Dessert is my favorite food group. <laughs> So like I've said, this is my favorite. If you're not eating it because you're scared, stop being scared and start making changes. Okay, get out of your head, right? That you can't and believe that you can. And I'm here to help you believe that and make it happen, make it a reality. All right, so createmyweight.com forward slash apply or comment here in the chat if you have any other questions. Let me see if there's any questions here um, that I didn't get to answer, let me see. Okay, I don't see any questions. So if you have a question, comment here, reach out to me, shoot me a message if you want to join a challenge, starts next week for recipes, or if you're really ready to make changes and learn nutrition and finally have food freedom once and for all, send me a message and um, we'll talk soon. All right, guys, enjoy your Thursday. Um, have an awesome, awesome day. Bye, guys.